Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Digital Art Book Publishing. This is the, uh, some of a, the beginnings of some of our mixed media concepts here. So we wanna, you know, we've had a lot of questions in terms of, you know, how do I take my digital arts projects and how do I uh, make them into, um, you know, a book? Or how can I publish them? How can I do things with my drawings, with uh, even films you're working on? Uh, 3D animations and uh, cartoons, illustration, paintings, anything that you're doing, we want to look at how we can create uh, different books out of it. How can we do publishing? And these types of books can also be used as digital assets. So this could be on a website. It could be a promotional portfolio type book. So the, the world of desktop publishing is nothing new. But what you can do is quite extraordinary now. So we're going to look at that this uh, in this two-part session. So we got week one this week, week two next week, and it's going to be really exciting. And now I'm going to take you through how to you know prepare your assets for desktop publishing, and then actually how to build that type of a book. So we'll look at different assets from photography to you know getting stills of video and making everything work. So this is going to be a really uh, a uh, different type of workshop, but it's going to bring all of our digital arts together into, you know, a, a mixed media uh, type concept, which is desktop publishing. So let's start up. So I want to thank all our partners in this project for uh, allowing this to, uh, to happen and, uh, and also the partner library. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts. Then we also have our library partners, which are the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now, in terms of what's really great here is our library partners, we have built digital arts computer workstations that are available at each library location. So there's two uh, iMac 27 inch computers, uh, basically fully loaded for video editing, for uh, animation, for uh, digital uh, design, so illustration, cartooning, and we've loaded the Affinity Publisher software. So this is a low cost app it's about $75, one-time purchase, and it's a low-cost app that is you can buy and put on your desktop, but you can also access through the library partner computers, which is really great. So that way you can go use the computers there, use uh, uh, the Affinity Publisher software on those computers. So everything we're going over today, you can either get the software and put it on your own personal computer, or you can re-watch this once it's done, take it to the library partner and do the work there directly. So it's kind of a blend of different things. So we're gonna look at some photo work, some uh, video work, and how do we import, export? Um, how do we get things ready? That's really one of the first things we wanna look at. So here's like an overview of the, the software. So Affinity Publisher software, low cost app. It's available for Windows and Mac OS. Um, it offers a one-time purchase fee, similar to Adobe's InDesign. So they have uh, Affinity Photo, Affinity uh, Designer, and Affinity Publisher. And so that's like Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Now, again, all of these are available on our, our library partner computers. And at the same time, you can also buy them if you want to. So that's the great thing. Again, they're low cost. There's no monthly subscription fee. So we've discovered these and we've been, you know, all our artists have been working on these and we're finding that they work, you know, just as well, have really good features as uh, the Adobe products. So, um, you know, and, and the same idea as the concepts we're talking about today, you can just as well do in Adobe. So it's, you know, the, the we always look, say that we're looking at concepts more than specifically the software. So that it's pretty universal, everything that we're trying to show you guys in terms of what you can do and how to do it. It's really the concepts that are at the core and heart of this. So today we're gonna really start to look at how do we tell the story of your digital art? So let's say you've taken, uh, you know, you have a photo portfolio or you have a photo show that you're displaying at a gallery. Now, you can just take pictures of those. You can put them on social media. You can do it that way. You can do a video of it. You can do different aspects of it. And that's great. But what about putting it together as a book that can be something that people can then perhaps purchase online digitally or it can be printed? And we're going to look at that process and, you know, taking that and then making it work. What if you had a digital illustration or you had a cartoon uh, 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 graphic novel uh, or graphic uh, uh, illustrations show at a gallery? Same thing, you can take those images and make them work into a book. Then, sometimes we don't think about it, but we can take things like video 
take video files, we can export those, and then we can make those also work as, uh, as assets to, um, to work with in terms of uh, um, you know, uh, images as well. So we can get still images from video, and that's really exciting too. So you've, you've shot a great uh, piece of video, um, you've done something, and you want to capture stills from it, and with like 4K resolution and even HD resolution, the image quality is quite great. So you can take stills and put that into a portfolio book. So that's kind of our goal here is how do we take the story of what you're doing and make it into uh, a book? And it's not always, we have to kind of wrap our heads around a little bit because now we're not necessarily having moving images, but we need to tell the story. We need to design it so that it has some sort of story to tell and to share. So that work can work really well. Okay, so that's the software. What we're gonna look at today is preparing digital art images. So that, again, from photos, illustrations, to video stills, getting that whole idea. Getting started with publisher, so we're gonna look at that. And then preparing a book. So essentially making a plan of what you wanna do in the book and then working backwards with that. And that's really important because what, what you need to know is, is how, how many pages do you want, what size of the book, and ultimately, are you looking to print the book? Are you looking to just have it as a digital only book? And these are really important questions because it's, it's a lot easier to work backwards than it is to just kind of go on the fly and you know, hope for the best. If you can work backwards, then you can know exactly what you need, how you need it, with the file formats and all sorts of uh, you know, kind of concepts in terms of, of how that can work. Okay, so uh, let's get started up here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just get out of the slide. Um, let's get right into here. I have uh, um, uh, some elements. So we're gonna just look at um, uh, some designer projects. And uh, do, 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 do. so this is something uh, we did in the Affinity Designer uh, software. So I'm just gonna get this to open up. There we go. So uh, down here, you can see it's, it's just loading up Affinity Designer. So it's one of the pieces of the software on the computer. So this is uh, pretty much set up in the same kind of fashion as the um, uh, computers, the digital arts uh, computers. So here's something we did. So we took a photo and we did a painting. It's a Niagara Falls uh, painting. So this is all done in Designer. We have uh, you know there's all the different layers of the, the paint. Um, you know, so there's different layers of, of painting happening, right? We did different brush strokes and, and over, the, over the water. So we did a, a digital painting, drawing over a painting in Designer. So for example, this is like an illustration. So if you've done an illustration, then what we need to do is figure out how to export it into some sort of a file. So what I can do is I can go File, and then I can go, uh, you can save as different things, but I'm gonna go Export. Under export, we have all these great tabs here. So it's gonna go PNG, JPEG, uh, GIF, TIFF, PSD, Photoshop document, PDF, which is the Adobe Acrobat document, SVG, uh, like super, uh, uh, super uh, video graphics, SVG, EPS, uh, which is an illustrator, EXR, HDR, um, TGA, Targa. So a lot of different aspects here. So what we can do is we can just, we can create, first of all, here's our size original size 1800 by 1350 pixels. I can put the quality at 100%, whole document, and it says here it's gonna be two megabytes. JPEG best quality. So we want best quality, because we're gonna be doing uh, for a book. So I can export just like that. I can also create a PNG, and the PNG is gonna be, uh, in this case, it's gonna be a bit bigger, by, by linear PNG, 2.37, and then a, a JPEG. So either of these are quite good for desktop publishing. You can also do TIFFs. TIFFs uh, typically can be a bit larger. Let's just give a comparison, 2.64. So we're about in the same range, so it's not too bad. Uh, Targas tend to be for video, Photoshop, uh, dip, uh, PSD. GIFs will be uh, usually a lot smaller. They'll be a lot tinier. Let's just see what it says. Calculating size. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, it's taking too long. Let's not wait for that. Okay, so let's, let's do a JPEG. So I'm gonna export. I'm going to decide where it goes. Niagara Falls painting for book. I'm going to hit save. Okay, and 
here is our JPEG. I'm going to open it up and there we go. So what's important to remember now is in desktop publishing in that sphere, in this world as we get things ready, we need to create, as you saw, there's, there's I think there's 42 layers in that designer painting. So that's a digital illustration that I did over a photo and you know yours could have hundreds of layers, thousands of layers. The point is you can't just throw those into desktop publishing. You want to have your final flattened image. And that's our goal here is we want to always export like a JPEG, a PNG. It's a contained uh, wrapper flattened image. And that's really crucial in preparing for desktop publishing. So there we go. So there's our Niagara Falls painting. Um, here we have another one. Uh, I'll open up another designer file. So here's a Collingwood Terminals painting. Again, you can see there's a uh, there's all these uh, different layers uh, over it, right? So layer, layer, layer. This is all in, in uh, um, the Affinity Designer. So same thing again. I'm going to go to File, Export. Let me just zoom in here. File, Export. It's going to give me these options, JPEG. So let's just look at the, uh, uh, let's do a, a PNG uh, just to have a, uh, uh, this something different in terms of, we'll just do a comparison and painting for book. And you know, again, either one's gonna work. Um, I would say, you know, I like working with, with JPEGs in terms of, um, you know, what overall, uh, it's just an older format that works quite nice. PNG is uh, works as well. So it's, it's not a bad thing, but it, sometimes it's nice if you can just have a, a uniform. Okay, I'm going to save everything as a JPEG, or I'm going to save everything as a PNG. But either one's fine. So you can see this is nice. That's our PNG. Here's our JPEG. So these are ready to go for my publishing. That's all we need to do. So if we go from designer. This is how we do that. Okay, so now uh, let's go into uh, another piece of software. So let's say we're working in, I'm going to uh, quit out of designer. Uh, let's save that. Uh, save okay so everything's closed so I just quit out of that okay and now what I'm gonna do is uh, let's have a look in do, 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 do. I think I have Just try to find the photo, photo masterclass, photos raw. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, in Affinity Photo. Okay. So this is something that was done in Affinity Photo took the photo, we did post-processing in a previous master class uh, in, uh, in post-processing. So we just played around with, um, um, you know, some of these elements. Um, did some adjustments and pixel things. So let's say this is the photo we like. That's fine. So we did all the post-processing. Same thing. So Affinity Photo, this would be another piece of software that you might be preparing. So the first one is if you did illustrations um, and that would apply to something like procreate too, another software we simply same thing you're doing an export and then you're exporting as a png or a jpeg you have the same kind of formats and then you have that flattened image so that's how we would do that so here same thing i'm going to go export and png or i can go to a jpeg and let's just see it's going to 17.29 megabytes the PNG, let's see if it's going to be bigger or smaller, probably a bit bigger. Okay, let's just do the JPEG. Here we go. I'm going to export. And I'm going to say, okay, where, where do we want this to go? So I'm going to say, um, I'll go to the uh, designer projects, let's just say here. Um, post process for book. And I'm really making that simple. Just, just label it as, as easy as you can. Um, and that's fine. 
Okay, and Command H will just hide that. And here we go. So here's going to be our our JPEG for book, right? So and again, another image from Affinity Photo, or if this was Photoshop, you're post processing your photo, and then you need it ready to put into the book. So we need to have a JPEG. That's how we would do that. We would create that export as, and there we go. So there we go. We have three elements ready to go. Now this isn't necessarily thematic. I'm just going to basically be doing a digital arts portfolio book that's based on a, uh, you know all the different things we've been doing in master classes, putting it together in a bit of a book to tell the story of the digital arts master classes from Creator Space. So that's going to be my goal. And this is where it's important. Even just in exporting, you want to start exporting. You know why export a thousand photos if you can really export the photos that will help tell your story. So by showing different aspects of uh, examples and samples of the the images and illustrations and photos that are being created, you know as as uh, you know instructors as we're teaching the digital arts um, different uh, disciplines with the Creative Space workshops, then we can show all these different elements, show all the different uh, aspects through the images we choose. So that's the first thing, starting the plan. So we're exporting things, but if I already have the plan and say, okay, this is the story that I'm gonna tell in the book, or this is the purpose of the book, then I can work backwards. Now, for my purposes, I'm gonna say, I wanna make a digital ready photo book that's gonna have all these, I call it a photo book because it's gonna have basically images that are like photos. Uh, so it's an image book about the creator space telling the story of the master class projects and sample work to showcase what kind of work are we teaching and trying to showcase in terms of our master class. So that's my goal of the book. Same thing if you're an illustrator, you might say, I want to show, you know, what the, my last year of illustration has been like, you know, during the pandemic and during, you know, what, what it's been like to, to have uh, as an artist uh, working from home or working remotely or being stuck. Um, and not necessarily maybe being able to travel. So how has that shifted? Maybe you want a before and after story. You want to showcase the year before and the year now and have that kind of back and forth. Maybe half the book is before, half the book's after. In that case, you might want to have the book that maybe it's flipped. So maybe the first 20 pages are one way and you flip the book around upside down and then it goes the other way so that they're upside down. So when you meet halfway, you have to flip the book around or start from the other side. So it has two front covers. These are those types of things you need to know ahead of time so that you can plan those images in that layout because that's already more complex than a normal book would be where you just have the front and back cover. Now maybe both, you have a front cover and you have a reverse front cover that together is gonna create this mirror image book. Very interesting. It's an interesting idea. But again, we wanna know what that is before we get into making things, right? So we've got all our images here, we're working on in the software, and now what we wanna do is, uh, let's look at something that we've been teaching a lot of, and that is, uh, I'm just gonna quit out of the Affinity Photo. So I'm just gonna go quit, or Command Q. Uh, I'll just save that document. Okay, and now let's look at something called um, uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is our editing software and where we might want to, um, again, have, be able to pull some, some stills. And it's a little bit different here because some of the software you can do more of an export. And this one is, is um, the, the idea here is that you take stills in, in your video images and then you can um, create uh, exports from those stills. Okay, so let's have a look here. I'm gonna look up this green screen demo and then I'm gonna look up a couple other projects. And we'll just look at how we can do still. So I'm just opening this up. Um, let's see, we might not have all the images in here. Okay, here we have this kind of an interesting image. Um, let me just open this up a bit bigger. So this is what we did with some compositing. Uh, we have a plane, we have a, a, a couple here, and then we change the river and so on. So this was a, a compositing uh, workshop that we did using uh, Fusion and um, which is great, and um, what we are going to do now is from here, I'm going to, uh, I like to do it this way. So I like to go to color, and under color, we can actually create these stills. And it says right here, no stills created. So then what I'm gonna do is go to view, 
So under the top menu here, so it's under view. View, I'm gonna go to stills, grab still. Let's zoom out and look at what happened. So we got the still of exactly our composited image. And it's gonna do it from where my cursor is. So I can also create like an endpoint uh, on there, but wherever my cursor is, it's gonna create that. Now, I'm gonna right click, and here I can export, and I can choose what type of file I wanna export. So let's have a look at these. So I'm gonna go back to, uh, first of all, where should we save this? I'm gonna go back here, designer demos, we'll go here. And here I can now pick a whole bunch of different files as well. So we have DPX files, uh, which are like a film file, Cineon files, which are again, like a film format, TIFF, JPEG, PNG. So we're starting to see some fam familiar ones. So you can see most programs will do JPEGs and PNGs. That's really all we need to focus on. TIFF files uh, can be great too, but you know, for most, for all intents and purposes for publishing, we can do quite a great job with JPEG and PNG files. Okay, so let's go do a JPEG. And I'm gonna say, okay, fine, let's do that. JPEG file, I'm gonna uh, call it something. So I'm gonna call it the river, river compositing sample for book. You can see I'm always putting big caps for book so I know exactly what it's for. I'm gonna say export and let's zoom out of here. Command H, I'm gonna get out of here and where did our export go? Oh, here we go, designer demos, here we go. Okay, uh, do, 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 do. oops, I think we didn't get the right, oh, here we go, here we go, the JPEG, right here. So there's our JPEG and we're exported. Isn't that great? So that's that's it. We've just exported that image. So that's how we can do it uh, really simply from the um, uh, you know for for the the project in terms of what we want to do here. So um, designer project. Let's put here. Here's all our books for book. I'm gonna put that all in there, and I'm just gonna change this to. Uh, publisher demo material. Just so we know what, that we're working in the publisher demo material. So now you can see I got a bunch of things here, four book, four book, four book, four book. So we're starting to build up our assets for the story of the creator space digital imaging. So we got this one, export, export. That's exported. Right, so you can see everything's ready to go, exported. Okay, and you can see how great this is to be able to do these uh, resolve stills because I can then quickly, let's go to the home here. Uh, let's find another part of something. Um, uh, do, 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 we did a, um, We'll do this one here. So this is just from the advanced uh, narrative film editing workshop that we're currently doing. Um, Okay, so we're gonna go over here. Uh, let's find kind of the image. So again, just choose a nice spot of what you'd like to do. I'm gonna go up here to view, stills, grab still. And there, again, there's our still. These are great, These, those are used for uh, color grading. So I'm just gonna, again, do the export, JPEG. And I'm gonna say desktop. I'm gonna find my publisher materials. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, Narrative editing still for book. There we go. I'm gonna command H just to get out of that. And here's our narrative film editing for book. So again, another still. So that's how easy it is to get our video 
assets are photos and our illustrations, JPEGs, PNGs, and we're just saving them as they originally uh, exist. Okay, so let's jump into Publisher. Here we go. And we're gonna look at the pre-production side of things. How do, we, how do we do this? So I'm gonna say, there's a great easy way to do this. We can go new document, and it's gonna ask us what do we wanna do. So here we have to decide what kind of sizing do we want. So there's European sizing, all the A, uh, zero to A tens. Then we have letter, legal. We have uh, the B sizings as well, and so on and so forth. So that's for press ready. I can also say, hey, I want something for the web. So I can create uh, publishing in you know HD or uh, things like that. There's architectural ones. There's a uh, photo books or photo sizes, right? So we're gonna go press ready, print. Uh, and press. So I'm going to just say, hey, I want to just make something that is uh, a letter size book. Okay, so that's our first thing, letter size book. DPI, I like to keep it at 300. So 8.5 by 11, 300 DPI, that's a pretty robust large amount of dots per square inch. That's what DPI stands for. And that's fantastic. So if you think about it, video is 72 DPI. So for 300, print is, is a great, uh, you know, that's the recommended idea, and, and that works from there. So here, um, image placement policy, this one's import, important. So if you have it linked, this means every time you import something, it's going to just link to it wherever it is. So I right now, when I import the all those images I said for book, for book, for book, it's going to stay linked to that desktop folder. And that's fine and that's great, but if we can also do embedded. And then what, what that's gonna do is gonna create, the everything's gonna be embedded. So it's gonna create a really big publisher file size. So right now, let's say I finish my publisher file, it's three or four megabytes. If I embed everything, as you can imagine, there's six megabytes, uh, 20 megabytes, and so on. Let's say I have 50 photos, it's gonna be a really large file size. It could be a few hundred megs in file size, but it's embedded. So that means if I somehow break the links or if I don't have that hard drive, maybe external hard drive that I was working on or with, it, will no, it won't be broken if I don't have that hard drive plugged in if it's embedded, it's embedded into the file. So this is again, working backwards, you have to ask yourself how, you know, how organized will you be? How likely is it that you might lose the link in the future if you're dealing with, let's say you're dealing with 20 hard drives the photos are all over the place, the images are all over the place, and it's a complex project, you might wanna just have it embedded, because that way, you don't have to worry about having those 20 hard drives at, you know, in front of you or connected to the computer at any given time. Instead, you can just work on the project and not worry about that. So those are the two options there. I'm gonna just stay linked, because we have everything on the desktop, and then we can say how many pages do we want, right? So we'll say, let's do 12 pages, that's fine. And then we have to ask ourselves, you know, are we, are they facing one another? Are they gonna be arranged horizontally? Do we start on the right or on the left? So you can do different things like that. You can arrange them vertically so that the book is going uh, vertically. Then we have a, a CMYK. So that's typical for printing to have it in CMYK, but some desktop publishing places, you know, uh, more of a smaller shop and things, they might, also print in RGB, which is red, green, blue. So CMYK is a, a standard printing, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And together that creates all the different colors in the print world. But RGB is red, green, blue, which comes from the uh, video world. And a lot of, uh, when you do photocopiers or things like that, if you're printing like that kind of, uh, kind of uh, low cost desktop publishing, they might want it in RGB because that's how their printers might work. So that's an important question to have. So again, working backwards, important question to have is, you know, talk to your, where you're gonna print and say, look, I'm, I wanna make this book, I'm gonna print it, what kind of settings I need. If you're not gonna be printing it, and it's gonna just be for the, uh, you know, the, an, an online book, I would actually do it in RGB format because then it's, instead of press ready, um, it's just gonna be for online use. And all the monitors you watch and look at are RGB. So just, I would do it that way. So in this case, we're not gonna print, so I'm gonna go into an RGB mode. 
um, for that reason. Then there's the different bit rate, rates, 8, 16, and so on. So let's go 16, and we're going to now hit Create. And here is our initial step. So how this would work is first you need to install the software if you don't already have it. So publisher, you can install You get 30 days free trial. Totally, you can do all the work that you want to. Try it out. And if you decide you, know, you don't want to uh, purchase it, you can just come to our library partners, come and use one of the computers. And it, it's loaded with publisher. So everything you do, you can rewatch and do it there. So this is our template. So as you can see, we have our master pages. Then we have page one, two, three, and it's all broken down. It looks just like a book. So you can treat page one, for example, as a cover, and then this could be the inside, two, three, four, five. And this way it'll become like a portfolio type book. And then what we do is we have different boxes. So we have text boxes, we have table tools, um, we have uh, artistic text box, we have pen tool, we have rectangle tool, we have picture frame rectangle tool, we have a place image tool, and that's how we keep going on and on and on. So um, that's the document setup. There it is. We can go to the spread setup and figure out what we want. Right. So what uh, what we're doing with the spread. Uh, preferences, so all of this stuff is, is right, uh, ready to go here. Uh, and then we have, they have these uh, like persona windows. And this is really great. So I'm in publisher, but then I can change it to go to designer. I can also change it to go to photo persona. And that means I can then do manipulation to the images just like as if I was in the affinity photo. So we can jump back and forth basically in personas so it acts like we're in the other different, different pieces of software. So if I want to do some more photo post-processing, I can actually do it right in Publisher without having to go all the way back to photo or designer. So that's what the personas do. And we'll see that in action as we uh, do our part two uh, next week. So let's just look at how this would work. So let's look at some of the basics. So we can have um, picture frame. So we, let's just put like a text uh, box. And I can then say, okay, what's what's in this? What's going to be in this text? Creator space. Digital arts portfolio. Okay, and I'm just going to do a command A, and then um, we're going to go up here and let's let's figure out how big we want it. And then we can we can manipulate this box to you know make it how we want it to, to look. Uh, maybe we want it centered. Maybe we want this bolded. Um, and you know we can do different styles. So they can be, you know, how how do we want this to look? So we can we can play around with uh, how how we want this to uh, to look right in, in terms of our title. So that would be our title. So then what we can do is we can uh, place an image. So basically we click on that. I'm going to go to the desktop, publisher demo material, and I'm going to say Niagara Falls for book. And now see it's at, it's waiting. It's like it's loaded. It's like a, in a trigger kind of position. Um, and we say yes. And there we go. So now we've brought it in. And now we can use a lot of these alignment tools. So you can see right there, it says the red and the green. It's telling me that that's a center alignment. I can make this bigger. So I can just scale it like so. And I can continue moving it around. And that's telling me it's uh, in the middle of the page. Like so. And there we go. So that could be our first page, for example. So we just place and make that work. Now, the cool thing is we can go to these master pages 
And just to kind of give it, give an example, if I go to the master page, um, and let's say I do something like this, and uh, we say we want it to be that. Oops. So what's cool is this is going to then appear on all the pages. As you can see now, it's on every page that I'm working on. So page one and so on. And that lets me avoid the trouble of having to design each page separately. If I want a common theme, for example, to have like this kind of purple bar at the top and perhaps I want to do, you know, something similar. Oops. Something similar to uh, to the bottom here. Okay, and I'm going to do. And let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so what does that look like? This is what it's done. So notice the uh, these boxes and things. This is out of the width of the uh, uh, margins. So we have basically our margins are right here. This is like a text margin. This is the like cutoff here. And that's how we go. And all of this stuff doesn't matter. These are just the overlaps. So, you know, don't worry about that. That's not what it's going to look like at the end of the day. So there's, there's the basic intro. So we got add some text. We can add an image, place the image, and then we can do a master page if we wish to. And then we can go from there. So the key again, just to recap is that you need to, to think about what your overall goal is for the desktop publishing work that you want to do. Is it going to be mixed media? So perhaps you, are multidisciplinary as an artist, you're looking to put photos, illustrations, uh, maybe some poetry, uh, maybe some video stills, and you know, different photos, different so on. Maybe there's lyrics from songs. So you're trying to put this whole package together. So first you gotta figure out, okay, what, what are the kind of elements you want in there? But from that, again, what kind of story are you trying to showcase here? Is it the story of you as an artist? Is it the story of you a certain presentation, a certain gallery display? Is it linked to some sort of an event? Is it linked to some sort of a, a experience, a timeline, whatever that is? Know what that vision is. And we talked about that example where we had the book and it's flipping like maybe pre-pandemic, post-pandemic or pre-pandemic, during pandemic, half and half and it flips around upside down. We need to know that so that we can design it flipped upside down. So we might do you know one half of it one way and the other half the other way so that we can put the book together reverse it and make it work, right? So that could be a complex design. So we want to know that what that story is. So we build everything for it. Instead of preparing thousands of images for this desktop publishing book, instead you can just know what the goal is and then you can just create and prepare the images as you need for that specific goal as we did. So then the other thing is that, you know, using the software, we need to export uh, the images, so we want like PNGs or JPEGs, that's my recommendation, either format is uh, works really well in, in uh, desktop publishing. And then the other thing is in video, if we're using something like DaVinci Resolve, we can do the stills export. That lets us create high quality, so if, if you shot in 4K, your still export is going to be that big and that nice. So that's uh, a really important aspect of, you know, that the look uh, will be uh, that uh, nice in terms of, uh, 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 you know, the image HD versus uh, uh, 4K and so on. So you have a really big, uh, nice, beautiful image of video. Same thing with, uh, so if in Blender, you can export uh, a file. So if you did some sort of a 3D rendering, you can save that out also, like as a, a PNG or JPEG. Same thing with Procreate. You know, all of these things are the same idea. So you export a JPEG or a PNG and then you're ready to do. So we, we got to catalog all the stuff we need. We figure out our plan. Then we start building it just like we did here, uh, executing the plan, uh, you know, having text. We can have the boxes and we can make a master page. 
So then what we're going to do next week, we're going to look at how to do, uh, we can link some text boxes. So we have descriptions, uh, setting the style. How do we figure out the style? So we want to look at some concepts of fonts. We're going to look at the different personas within the software so we can take an image and we can further post process it or manipulate it. We can take this image and make it black and white. If we decide to, we can change things for whatever reason. We can say, hey, maybe the whole book wants to be black and white. That's okay. And we can do that all here. We don't even have to do that in the other software that where we've exported it. So we don't, we can just do it all in here and try th those types of elements out, which is really a fantastic way to work. So that's basically uh, our session. Um, again, so this, this, these kinds of blocks, you know, I think it's, it's a great uh, tool to be able to, um, you know, to, to be able to move around with everything. Um, you know, these images can just, can, can move around and pop around. We're not stuck with anything. Um, I link to these, so they're not embedded. So again, the file size won't be so big. Um, but let's just for uh, one final thing that we always need to do is save as, and that's what we're going to do here is we're going to say creator space book demo and save. Let's just have a look at what, how big that size is. Creator space book demo, 863 kilobytes. So that's really not too big of a file to start with versus all the other files. And that's it, just organizing everything and, uh, and making it all work. And that's really the goal of, uh, you know, just of, of uh, doing your design work and, and making it all work uh, in terms of, um, you know, getting started and, and making it work. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can email me, tom at tbmcs.ca. Again, this will be uh, week one. Week two, we're going to get into the personas and further image work and uh, design work and fonts and so on and getting a whole publishing, published book completed based on all the images that we have prepared. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and I want to, again, thank all our partners, uh, Canon Council for the Arts, then our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Be sure to check out the digital arts computers now available to access two computers, iMac, 27 inch, fully loaded with external hard drives and all the Affinity software, including Affinity Publisher, ready there for you to use and enjoy. Thanks again and uh, have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys uh, next week for part two. Enjoy.